I'm Carmion Hamilton, interior designer, content creator, blogger, and HGTV's Design Star Next Gen winner. I'm on a mission to elevate my bar with some simple crafts that I can complete in the time it takes to drink one cocktail. I'm gonna be making a gilded planner for some fresh herbs and a little mojito to drink while I make it. I'm gonna start with the black pot. And so I have a gold leafing kit. I think a triangle shape will give me the impact that I'm looking for. I'm just gonna use some tape to mark off my design. So now that my tape is on, my triangle is marked, just take a little brush, get some adhesive on it, and you just apply the adhesive where you want your gold foil to go. Bam, that's it. Gold foil can really be super delicate. The tip is to let the packaging do the work for you. You see how it kind of holds on to this plastic sheet? So you open it, take your adhesive part, and apply like this. Something like that, yeah. And... Pull it off. Use your sheet to press the foil into the adhesive. And just tap it down. See the ridges of the planter coming through? You can always go back and add a little bit more adhesive later, tack on some more foil. Well, the fun part is making a mess. So you just brush away the excess foil. The brushing kind of burnishes the foil into place and gives you that smooth surface. This little spot here and these little spots here, I'd probably, let's see if this works. Maybe the adhesive is there. Ooh, I'm keen. I'm in love with this coverage so far. It's time to peel some tape. This is so satisfying. Tape. Yes. This looks great. And the time it takes to drink one cocktail. I love how the gold pops against the black base. Just some tape. Got us this crisp geometric look. I cannot wait to get them on the bar with the herbs in them. Cheers. We're gonna make some hand-dyed napkins and to sip on, let's make a salty chihuahua. It's one of my faves. I really wanted to hand dye some cloth napkins. One, it'll make my bar very pretty. Two, my guests will feel very special. So when people think dyeing, I'm sure a lot of you are thinking tie-dye, but I mean, hello, do I look like a tie-dye girl? No. We are going to be doing something a little bit more modern, a little bit more with the times, a little more elevated. And we're using super basic materials, store-bought fabric dye. Just follow the instructions on the package. I have some cloth napkins. These are just cotton. I'm not soaking mine first because I don't want the dye to bleed everywhere. We're being very intentional on where we're putting this color. I have some flexi plates. You can use coasters, glass, anything that's not cloth to help you on this little craft. I would like to create more of a geometric pattern. I don't want to dye the whole napkin. And that's what my plexi is gonna help me do. Block some of that dye. This one's done. Let's fold another one.
we're going for something modern. So I'm not gonna be dunking the whole napkin. I wanna leave a ton of white space to have some contrast. So we're just gonna dip like the edges. And I'm gonna start with the triangle. And since I'm only gonna dip the edges, I'm gonna move my clips a little bit so I get a little more edge. First dunk. Oh my goodness. Cotton is already soaking up the dye, so we're getting like a shibori effect. And clean up, let these dry, enjoy a few sips of my cocktail and then we'll see how these have turned out. I mean. This took the same amount of time it took to drink one cocktail. Mine only need an iron to set the color, but for yours, just check the box. Whatever your instructions say, just follow that. These are gonna look so good when I style them on my bar. I'm gonna show you how to make some super simple DIY artwork, and along with it, how about a little French 75? My bar has some open shelving that would greatly benefit from some wall art. I have three different size frames and I've already cut some white paper to fit in each of the frames. I have some black paper. The tip is to tear it along a straight edge. We just rip. I rip a few more. The color black became very critical in my life and my design aesthetic. The more I researched my culture, black is necessary in every single space just for a moment of grounding. Every space needs a little black. I'm not trying to create anything in particular. I just wanna see where the chips fall. Maybe you should just, you know, do one of those and see what happens. And if you don't like what you glue down, I mean, it's glue and paper. Make more than one. I'm really liking how this one is looking. I'm gonna start on the other two. I really love where these are right now. We need to add a little bit of you know, like bubbles in a French 75, it's just that, mm-hmm. I really wanna add some gold. Something organic in here. Organic, rustic, those are the words when it's not perfect. Let the French 75 lead you. The more imperfect, the more hand done it looks. Like a human did it. So you guys are probably watching this like, well, what is she doing? But, once you put this in a frame, I mean, everybody's gonna ask you, where'd you get that from? So I'm just going to accent our black paper pieces with some gestural lines. We just made original artwork. Right on time. This is a perfect one cocktail craft. Now let's see one of them framed up because of course, you gotta admire your work, right? Oh my goodness. Getting this framed totally took it from arts and crafts to original, one of a kind, unique wall art. I cannot wait to get the rest of these framed and on the bar. I'm gonna be making a resin tray with an art deco twist. And to drink, 
a St. Germain spritz. Yes, I can taste that peach. Oh, it's so good. I'm ready to do a craft. I got a really inexpensive acrylic tray, but we're going to make it glamorous. Very simply though, some cutout paper, gold flakes, and some resin. Let's have some fun. Let's see where the shapes take us. Remember negative space. The negative space is how the beautiful pieces breathe. If you have too much of a beautiful thing, you can't pay attention to each of the individual beautiful things. So the negative space is where the eye gets to rest and appreciate the things that are there. I need to just tack these down with a little bit of adhesive so the resin doesn't pick them up and carry them away. <laughs> Putting in the last piece, it's already looking so good, but it needs some zhuzh. It needs some glamour. I think I want some gold painted elements and also some loose gold flecks. Odd numbers really make things more interesting. Like if you have even numbers, it's pretty symmetrical. It's kind of what the brain expects. If it's odd, the brain is like, wait a minute, what are we doing here? I love how this looks. I think I'm ready to pour some resin. I am masked up and prepared to handle this resin. I just mix these according to the package, super simple. is the magical moment we get to pour in ooh, lots of gold flakes. All right, I'm gonna add one more layer. If you feel like you have a little bit more texture than you want, just add more resin to smooth it out. going to let this dry for a little bit. I'm still counting this as a one cocktail craft. I mean, my tray looks incredible. It's sitting outside, drying. It's amazing right now, but I cannot wait to see it finished and on the bar. I mean, we took something super inexpensive and completely elevated it, and it looks luxurious. I'm going big today. The craft I'm making is a mirrored backsplash, and I'm making an old fashioned to drink while we're working on it. I started working on my bar some time ago, and I kind of called it done, but it's never really felt finished. I've always wanted to add some sort of backsplash. This room is very deep, dark, luxurious, but I wanted to bounce some more light around in here and the idea of an antique or smoke glass really spoke to me. Smoke glass can be expensive and the materials was adding up. So we came up with a little Lexi glass. So the first step to this craft is you want to peel the plastic off of one side of your plexiglass and also make sure that it's very clean. You also wanna take a pretty good size spray bottle, fill it half with vinegar and half with water. And really, you just kind of mist it. Just really quick first. When you're looking at an actual antique mirror, a lot of the age and wear comes around the edges of the mirror. So that's kind of where you wanna focus your spritz. The magical portion of this craft is taking some mirrored silver spray paint. Make sure it's shaken very well, and you wanna cover your entire plexi, including the water droplets. But don't get too crazy, don't spray too close, and move your water droplets around because you want the droplets to stay where they are so you get that splattered effect. 
the next step is super easy. You just take a paper towel and carefully blot up your water droplets. And you'll notice that there'll be little spots where the spray paint didn't go. That's important. And the last step is covering the entire plexi with black chalk spray paint. Even coverage, just like your silver, but make sure it's nice and neat because this is going to be what gives us that mirrored effect and the antiqued effect on the back of the plexi. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And you see where our water droplets were? And you see why you spray it with the black spray paint? Oh my goodness, this is antique mirrored perfection. And it took us like five minutes to do this, like so fast. This is going to look amazing on my board. I love how this looks. I'm almost done with my cocktail. All I need to do is get this installed on my bar. I'm just gonna use some adhesive strips, keeping it easy and simple. Just wait for this big reveal.